Hello and welcome to the St. Louis School Library Year in Review mini conference uh, where we're having a whole morning of sharing for our successes in the St. Louis area with librarians. And so um, my name is Shannon Simel and I am the Future Ready Librarian at Live for Life Academy. And um, these videos will be uploaded to my uh, YouTube channel, PD Bytes, and you can also follow the PD Bytes hashtag uh, today for our mini conference. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce our special um, guest host for this session, um, and that is JP. Hey, Shannon. First, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is JP Presavento. I serve the Fox School District in Arnold, Missouri as the Instructional Technology Coordinator. Some of you guys may be watching thinking it's a little weird that just an ed tech guy is co-hosting a library event. Um, one of the hats I wear here in Fox is that I facilitate the work of the library media specialist professional learning community. So I you know, I do a lot of the PD, I facilitate their meetings and serve kind of as a liaison between librarians and administrators and that kind of thing. Um, if you're interested, feel free to connect with me on Twitter at JPPrez, follow my blog at jpprez.com, and I do a little podcast with Aaron Lawson, who was just on here shortly, called the EdTech Pod Squad that you can subscribe to on iTunes or Apple Podcasts and Anchor. So we definitely wanted to take advantage of JP's expertise um, during this session. Um, he's a Google guy and will have some great tips for us. And, and one of the reasons why I think this is important is because what I often hear from librarians is I just don't have enough time in my day to um, collaborate and with teachers the way that I would like to. Um, so he's got some solutions for us for that. So uh, take it away, JP. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, this little segment is called Google Tools for Classroom Collaboration. And all right. My, and like I said, I'm JP. Here's how you can connect with me if you're interested. I'm a Google for Education certified trainer if you're interested in that. Um, but really what I want to talk about today is how, you know, we can harness the power of Google Tools to make our lives collaborating with um, our teaching staff and with each other a little bit easier. Because, you know, we all know that we're busy, right? How do we make time for meaningful collaboration when teachers, you know, especially in that K-5 setting, are running in, dropping the kids off, running off to PLC collaboration. We're trying to find teachers, like, wait, I wanna help, I wanna help, I wanna be part of the conversation, but we just don't have time because, you know, in a lot of places, especially, you know, in Fox, our librarians serve as release time for our teachers. So I want to talk a little bit about how we can leverage the power of Google tools to, um, to really kind of make that collaboration possible and make it meaningful. You know, one thing that I talk about constantly and it's funny, I was chatting with a few of my um, coach friends last night and I said, I don't know how many times I can use this slide and get away with it, but it's really, you know, there's a, an important message and that's the, you know, when we think about instructional technology, we really have two reasons for using it, right? Instructional technology is here to transform student learning and instructional technology is here to, in this case, increase educator efficiency. That we can really be more efficient if we appropriately harness the use of technology in our schools. And we're gonna take a look at a couple ways we can use Google tools to do that today. Um, because like, you know, I remember I've been hearing for years, the phrase work smarter, not harder. Right. So let's talk about how we can use Google to work a little bit smarter and get a whole lot more accomplished. So the first thing I want to talk about is Google classroom. Um, you know, I know that many of us use Google classroom to facilitate work, you know, um, to what we use classroom for, to get kids work, to get work back from kids, and to serve as kind of that storefront. Well, Victoria is going to chime in and talk about one way that we can harness Google Classroom and kind of piggyback on the work that some of our other folks are already doing. So, Victoria, I should have introduced you to start with. Uh, sorry about that. But if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself uh, first and just tell a little bit about what you do. Sure. I am the librarian at Whiteown Middle School in the school district of okay. Clayton. And because we're a small district, I also serve as the coordinator for district libraries. And here at Whiteown, um, for years, we've been trying to figure out the best way for kids to have pretty constant access to, um, Shannon taught me years ago when we worked together, um, how to uh, do a lot of screencasting. So we do a lot of teaching through screencasting, especially um, any technology things that we need to teach. And so where do we house those 
those videos once they've been created so that kids have constant access. So something we changed um, this year is um, many teachers have made me a co-teacher and we've put a little um, topic, we love that new edition, I think it came on last year, of the topics in Google Classroom. And one of the topics is research um, tools and tips. And so we use some online uh, tools for research. Uh, one is Noodle Tools. And all of those screencasts, whether they've been made by me or by students or teachers, um, we have those uh, in that little subject tab or that little um, topic tab on the side and then kids have constant access. So we've been kind of tracking it. We actually did a little education, you know, action research and kids are accessing it way more than them, you know, leaving Google Classroom, going to the library website, trying to find the topic that they're interested in. And so it's been really helpful and I, I really feel like kids are um, more engaged and they know exactly where to look. And it's so easy once you're a co-teacher in many Google Classrooms to post it on multiple, in multiple classes and in multiple um, Google Classroom sites. So it's been really helpful for us here. The teachers seem really happy about it. Our eighth graders who've had it both ways um, really like that it's a lot easier to find. So I love that you're doing this, um, especially because I know sometimes it can be harder to get some teachers to collaborate with you and, you know, let you into their classroom. And this is like, they're letting you into their classroom and they let Finally. you into the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> That's you right. Know, you have direct access to the students to share the information you need to share. And, you know, also, um, I guess you can kind of peek in on what they're doing and see if there's any other collaborations. <laughs> yeah, that's been, that's been one of the hidden benefits because I can kind of see what are they posting, what's coming up, and then I can chime in and be like, oh, we have these resources or, you know, we have these tools or I could come in and do this piece. And so it really has literally opened a lot of real classroom doors, not just the virtual doors. So it's been nice. Wonderful. And that's awesome. So I, and I just kind of threw up on my screen where that topic section is located in the stream of Google Classroom. And I'm going to hop on over to the about section real quick, just so anyone who's not familiar with it. So I went over to the about section of the class that I'm teaching. Um, and we saw over here, this invite teachers button that's really useful um, that I can just pop any, anyone in my district in here and add them as a co-teacher to this class. And kind of the fundamentals of that is that the co-teachers can do anything you can do as the class's teacher with the exception of archiving the class. So uh, you have a lot of powers and I guess a lot of um, collaborative opportunities as the co-teacher there. Um, you know, one other thing I was talking to one of my district's music teachers last week, and we were talking about this kind of collaborating in Google Classroom. And he said, well, I have some teachers who, for whatever reason, they're not on board with Google Classroom yet, but I am, and our library media specialist is. So I suggested that, you know, one way that we can have that collaboration, and if nothing else, one way that we can be more efficient with our time is maybe all those specials get together and you have a Google Classroom that shares all those kids. So, you know, you have the, you know, Jay, if I'm the classroom teacher, Shannon's the librarian and Victoria is the music teacher, maybe you guys make a Google Classroom because I'm not on board yet for whatever reason that is for those kids. You can invite me as a co-teacher as a way to kind of nudge me along and that I can be part of that conversation, right? About, hey, here's the learning that's going on in here. You can jump in and use this as part of your class or maybe, you know, is there a way that you can maybe um, allow us to integrate some of the things that are happening in class in our classes so it can be one streamlined learning experience instead of segmenting off the library over here and well we only do library things in library or we only do music things in music how can we make it one cohesive learning experience for all of our kiddos i love that idea jp um although i would definitely want to teach them how to turn off the notifications um so i wasn't constantly getting absolutely <laughs> yeah that, that's something you absolutely have to think about so the next thing i have um if it's okay for yeah. me to Three keep kind of kind of jumping in, um, is using Google Classroom as kind of a resource database. And I, I actually took this idea from my friend, colleague, Sadie Lewis. Um, you know, so maybe you have, and so now I'll talk about the context of a whole team of library media specialists, right? So in Fox, maybe all of our elementary librarians, they, they kind of try to work 
and teach similar lessons. My middle school librarians do the same kind of thing. So if you create this Google Classroom here, and we invite all those folks to be the, your co-teachers, and then in this Google Classroom, in our assignments, we create assignments that are gonna be what we push out to the students. So we create the assignments with the title, with the instructions, with the attachments, and then we're all co-teachers in this class. So then when I hop out to my other class, my demo class over here, I can come over and reuse a post. So I come in to reuse post and I find that class I'm looking for. And here's this post that we decided this is how we're going to teach, this is how we're gonna introduce Mayan Reader to our kids. And we all have the same assignment. So it's right here, ready to reuse. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel 11 times. If we collaborated to create that activity, now here's a way that everyone will have access to it. So we're all, all being co-teachers in that class. We have access to those resources to use this kind of as a resource database. Those are my two, like the two big kind of Google Classroom tips for library media specialists. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is Google Drive. Um, so we're going to talk about the, and let's see, Shannon, what's our time? Are we at about 10 minutes? Yeah, I think so. So we're going to talk just a little bit about Google Drive um, and how we can use Google Drive to kind of create that collaboration. So I'm going to pop out of the slide deck and pop back into my Google Drive. So I have over here, um, a library media specialist Google Drive folder. And one thing I really like to do is to create a folder structure in Google Drive so that I can create a folder like I see here on my screen. I share that folder with whoever needs access to it. And then as I drop files and other folders in there, that person or that group automatically has access to all of those files. So again, this is a great way to create a collaborative environment with the rest of your district library team who maybe you don't have an opportunity to meet with, but four or five, six times per school year. And you're still able to share all of those resources. So, you know, over here in my folder, we have um, our, li our elementary library folder with all of our resources in here. We even have a section with our library newsletters so everyone can access each other's library newsletter throughout the year to get ideas so what, how are you communicating with your community maybe I can take a little, take a piece from yours and add it to mine so that shared um, Google Drive file structure is really important the other way we can really utilize Google Drive is by creating um, we can use Google Drive as a way to curate resources for PLCs that we work with right um, so what if you, know, you have a folder structure in your Google Drive that instead of me having all these different library categories, I have first grade PLC, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. Inside of there, and this isn't something that's gonna happen overnight. I don't wanna chat and someone think about, oh my gosh, JP, I don't have time to do this by tomorrow. This is something that you curate over a, over a period of time. And then maybe inside this um, first grade folder, you have a folder for each unit. And you know that in the historical fiction unit, you have teachers who are going to um, focus on the Civil War and the American Revolution. So that's where you start putting in some of those resources or you have documents that link to sets of resources or activities that you can share with those PLCs. So you have that stuff kind of, is not prepackaged, but it's ready to go and it's curated in Google Drive. Um, you know, because one, one reason we use Google Drive in schools is to help us organize our lives and share things wherever we are and sharing that Google Drive folder with with that PLC is a great way to develop that partnership and to kind of be a team where hey here's a set of resources you add to them I add to them and we can all use them with our kids sounds like a great idea oh thank you all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come down to Google Forms um, and talk just a little bit about Google Forms for PLC collaboration. So, um, you know, as I talk with the Library Mia specialists here in Fox, one thing that we talk about is we talk all the time about how can we break into PLCs when we're serving as release time so that the PLC teams have the opportunity to meet, 
right? Because library is treated as one of the four specials, um, and our teachers have that opportunity to meet with their PLCs. But we need we want to be a part of that conversation as much as we possibly can. So one thing that I recommend here, and I have some folks who use this some to some extent, may not the full extent that I'm going to show, but um, how we can use Google Forms for that collaboration. So what I like to do, I like to have a Google Form and attach the Google Sheets add-on form mule to it. So what will happen is the PLC team will fill out the form when they meet. I will automatically get an email and we can set it so that I get an email, the PLC team leader gets an email, and the principal will get an email also um, that kind of says, here's what we talked about, here's how you can loop into our conversation. So let me jump out of here, and I have a video right here that I'm not gonna make anyone listen to me, listening to myself, um, the, but the video is here in the slide, and that'll be in Shannon's show notes if this is something that you wanna learn a little bit more about. So, what this will look like, you know, so how I would have this set up is, you know, I would talk to my building principal first and I'd say, I really want to be a part of all these professional learning communities, but I don't have time to be in the meetings. So could you help me get the PLC team to leave me feedback whenever they meet? So maybe the leader of the PLC team or whoever's in charge is going to take this library form and they're just going to make it one of their bookmarks and that's how they spend the last five minutes of their meeting. And they fill out this form. And whenever they hit submit on this form, what form mule this Google Forms add-on will do, I'm sorry, Google Sheets add-on will do, it will generate an automatic email based on their form submission. I have this email set just to come to me, but you can have it set to go to whoever you want. So I got a little review of what's happening in that professional learning community so I can work as a partner with them instead of having the, you know, the kids come down to my space and it's this whole separate thing that isn't tied to the classroom whatsoever. So this is kind of what that's gonna look like. And if I jump on out to my Google form, and this is a demo one that I made, um, I collect the email address, I just ask the grade level, and a couple questions. Um, your form doesn't need to look like this. But where the real magic comes into play, in the responses tab, I clicked on the little spreadsheet icon to make a spreadsheet. And then what form mule will do once I'm in my spreadsheet, if the magic of Google and mail merges, it's gonna take each one of these columns. And when a row is merged, so I'm sorry, when someone submits a form, it'll take what's in that row. And I want to say, what grade level are you in? So when I click this little button over here for grade level, it'll automatically pull in the grade level that the person put in their form. And it's going to fill in all this data automatically and send me an email after they meet. So I don't have to think about reminding the PLCs to do this. And I don't have to, one, you know, I don't have to worry about checking a spreadsheet or checking a form because the information is coming right to me. So I'm able, it's able to allow me to develop that partnership with the professional learning community. I think this is such a great use of a form um, to try to keep up with the PLCs. Um, and if, you know, like you said, if you can get them to make that just a regular part of their practice, um, that can be really helpful. I also just want to put a plug in for Formule. It is a terrific add-on. Um, mm -hmm. I use it um, in my library for um, book requests and also book recommendations. So um, whenever kids do book recommendations, uh, there's a, a form question for each of the, the pieces of the, um, re the book recommendation. And then um, what's really cool is then um, because I can post via email to my blog, I can actually set it up where um, the subject line of the email becomes the heading for my blog and then the oh, email so cool. itself is the content um, and then it can just automatically um, post to my blog. So I've, I've gotten away from doing that this year um, but because um, I've just made some other priorities um, but that's been really helpful in the past. So um, definitely and, check out Formula if you haven't. And the thing I, I want to stress, I know we're running a little bit low on time, I really want to stress that you know I, I use the phrases spreadsheet and I think I may have said email merge tag and some folks their head might be spinning right now so that's too techy for me it's not too techy for you if I learned how to do it anyone can learn how to do it. I taught the lady in the office next door to me who is far from a techie how to do it um, 
but it's all about how we're, you, how we're leveraging technology and these Google tools to make our lives a little bit easier. The one thing I want to stress with this particular strategy is, you know, buy-in from your principal is so incredibly important that they are on board with the idea of that collaboration between the library and the classroom and that they're on board with, hey, here's how I want to collect that data because I can't be part of the PLC meeting. Well, thank you so much, JP, for uh, sharing some tips with us of how we can leverage uh, Google for the library. Um, I I know there's probably a lot more that you could have shared if we had more time, um, but I really appreciate your, your expertise here. Um, so coming up next, we have our panel discussion on 21st century librarianship. So I hope a lot of you will be jumping out of this session and jumping in to join us for that conversation next. Um, but before we go, I wanna give JP an opportunity to plug his um, upcoming librarian PD. Absolutely. Before I do that, I want to shout out, it looks like uh, two of my librarians popped in for this one, Megan and Tanya. Thanks for um, popping in. So I'm really excited on what a, a targeted date of September 15th in the fall of 2018. I'm planning to host the what I think to be the first EdCamp Library Media Specialist. Um, I'm planning to host that here in the Fox School District. It will be a morning event on Saturday, September 15th, the first library EdCamp. It's learning by librarians, for librarians, self-directed, because I hear that we oftentimes feel that, well, you all oftentimes feel that PD doesn't always fit your needs. So I want to, just like Shannon's doing today with this awesome mini camp conference, give an opportunity for some librarian conversations to really be taking place here in Fox. Great. Thank you so much, JP. And uh, thank you also, Victoria, for popping in and sharing that strategy that you used with us. Um, so we'll go ahead and say goodbye. And we'll see you next time. Awesome. We'll see you soon.